from our life force, which we call God. But when we are immersed in any creative activity, we literally reconnect with and recapture our sense of wholeness and well-being. Now, any activity can be creative, from cooking to doing the laundry, from planning a meal, to planning a vacation, to balancing your checkbook, or balancing your life. Writing in his book, Consciousness Unfolding, Joel Goldsmith says, and I quote, the only reason that you or I individually and the world collectively experience disharmony and discord in the form of sin, dis-ease, and death is the belief that we are other than God being. The moment we realize that God is the reality of our being, we no longer need what anyone else has. And this ends all wars, all competition, all trickery, all dishonesty." End quote. So instead of disconnecting from our source, we need to disconnect from the past and all the accompanying baggage. Our Declaration of Principles states, we believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. So we are not separate entities at the women fancy of some external puppeteer. In spirit, separation is not real. The reality is in the recognition of that divine connection which underlies unity and oneness. In reality, we are not alone. We are all one. And if we are all one, contained in that allness, that oneness, is you and me and every other self. All our judgments, all our prejudices, our fears, successes, joys, and pain, every feeling and emotion that we have ever felt or expressed. As Maya Angelou said in her poem, The Human Family, we are more alike, my friend, than we are unalike. In the King James Version of the Bible, we're told in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8, but now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. So my talk this morning is titled, The Potter's Hand. We may metaphorically be referred to as clay, but in reality, we are not made of sod. <sighs> Ernest Holmes reminds us, do not bedim your inner light. Man's other name is God. Khalil Gibran, writing in The Prophet, says, to be little, you have to be little. And little we're not. Our true nature, our essential self, is peace, is love, is wholeness, is joy, is abundance, is wisdom. Our soul, S-O-L-E, and S-O-U-L, purpose of being, is to demonstrate all that is true. And all that is truly true is God, and God alone. And God is within us. Therefore, all the qualities of God are already within us. So what would cause us to feel diminished, disconnected from the source of our very being? Perhaps a lack of faith or trust, a loss of confidence from some experiential badness, <laughs> not knowing as in not being aware, or maybe we're not doing the necessary work to replenish and restore, not paying attention to the upkeep of our spiritual nature. You know all the things that we love to talk about? Meditation, take classes, read books, have fellowship, do your journaling. All of these are tools to keep you in touch and to boost our spiritual nature. Repeat after me. I am an undaunted, inspired, creative expression of infinite mind. I am an undaunted, inspired, creative expression of infinite mind. 
the whole Spirit of God, is in full action through me. Got that? Let that sink in. Clay, as many of you know, any of you ever worked with clay before? Okay. Clay is an extremely malleable material with infinite potential and possibility for creative expression, limited only by the imagination and skill of the potter. I let you in on a little secret. Most of you know that I'm a goldsmith. I design jewelry. What many of you do not know is that I started off in ceramics. <laughs> As a student of our national treasure, the great Cecil Ball, yeah, <laughs> who he almost single-handedly transformed the ceramic artistry of Jamaica. Believe it or not, I was in the same class as Norma Herrick. <laughs> and we still have a good laugh about that because Norma has carried on the tradition and the legacy of Mr. Ball's excellence. And she is now an internationally recognized ceramic artist. Alas, clay was not in my future. <laughs> my efforts on the potter's wheel, well, let's just say they were an occupational hazard for the rest of the class. <laughs> because my clay would inevitably end up in someone else's lap because it went sailing off the wheel. <laughs> but I do have a great admiration for potters and I love to watch the process, watch the potter's hands as they transform this nondescript lump of mud, pardon any potters out there, is mud, <laughs> into something that is exquisitely beautiful as they massage it and caress it and punch it and pinch it and, huh? and before you know it, there, voila, there is this delicate elegance or this voluptuous sensuality. It's magical, it's magical. It's the kind of work that you have to be physically involved in. You cannot talk about doing it. You have to be in the clay in order to create with the clay. You have to let it squish through your fingers and become one with the material. Metaphysically speaking, if we are the clay, that substance, and God is a divine artist at work, the potter shaping and reshaping, fashioning this substance into something beautiful, then the result of the artist's work really is the expression of the self that the artist is, correct? As all artists know, what we create is an extension of our deepest selves when we are in total surrender to that creative process. And it doesn't matter what area of the arts you're involved in, singing, dancing, cooking, that's an art too. When we are in the process totally, we forget everything else and we are at one with the source of that creation. Likewise, we being created in the image and likeness of God must possess all the qualities of God because God is in us, working us up like the clay, right? The creation cannot be separated from the creator. The simple truth, and it's very simple, is that God is right where we are. Right here so, right here so. Not in some far off, inaccessible realm of space. The divine life is in everything and in everyone. We cannot truly be separate from it except in our own minds through our own limited thinking. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. But at any time we can make up our minds and decide to live from the realization that God is all there is. When we declare we are created in the image and likeness of God, do we really mean it? Do we know what it means? If we believe that God is all, and we are immersed in it, saturated with it, surrounded by it, what is there to fear? How can we fear anything about life? There is one God. There is one life. And we live it. It lives through us. 
The more we seek to align our thoughts with the attributes of God, the more we realize that we don't have to force or pursue anything. We don't have to fear anything. We simply recognize the presence and allow its free expression in, through, and as us. Any quality that you can name, be that love, peace, abundance, wisdom, all of it, is not accessed by pursuing it, but by allowing it, because we already have it. We generate experiences from within our own soul, and this produces according to its own kind. Now, Dr. Elma, our founding minister, used to say, if you squeeze an orange, you're going to get orange juice, because that's what's inside the orange. Say with me. I'll say it once, and then I'll break it down. Now is the time for spirit to be made manifest through me with joy, passion, and purpose. I am created by infinite intelligence to express myself as an extraordinary being. Now is the time, now is the time. for spirit to be made manifest through me with joy, passion, and purpose. I am created by infinite intelligence to express myself as an extraordinary being. Creative pursuits can change perspectives and provide new tools to deal with life. I'll tell you a story, a true story. While I was still an art student in Canada at the Alberta College of Art, a group of us, 12 art students, developed a project for a summer work program which we called HART, an acronym for Hospital Art Recreational Therapy. We got some funding from the Canadian government, and we pioneered the program at the Children's Hospital and the Psychiatric Ward at the General Hospital, both in Calgary. Our intention was to simply bring some life, light, and fun into the institutions and earn some extra money. None of us had any training in art therapy. We were just enthusiastic art students who created an opportunity where we saw a need. My group of six was assigned to the general hospital, to the children's hospital. And the doctors and nurses monitored our progress with the patients. Now we had children who had never left the hospital from birth. They were abandoned by their families because they were severely handicapped in some way. We had some who displayed speech and motor skills, were mentally disabled, physically disabled, the whole gamut. We also had a few broken bones. The program ran for only six weeks. And in that time, amazing results were recorded. Before the program was complete, those same children were telling their stories through poetry and music, drawing and painting, writing plays, designing, costuming, and producing puppet shows, recording their days on film, and laughing, laughing. For the first time ever, laughter rang through the wards. Was this a miracle? The staff thought so but we didn't. For a lot of those children, this was the first time they were engaged in activities that were fun, just for fun. This was the first time that they had been allowed to be children first, not patients. They were engaged in activities that challenged their abilities and stimulated their imaginations, hinting at possibilities beyond their circumstances. They felt alive and glad to be alive. But the paradigm shift was not restricted to the children. The first week, we, the art students, were totally traumatized. We would cringe going in the doors, dreading the touch of really, I mean, these were really sick children. They just wanted to be hugged. But after about a week, we began to see them as people rather than sick children. These were children who were no different to any other children. 
Who wanted, if only for a short time, to imagine a carefree life outside of the hospital without doctors and nurses and needles? By the third week, we were greeted by bright-eyed, eager kids awaiting our next adventure. It was magical, fun, but don't, didn't stop there. The hospital staff, they experienced a shift in consciousness as well. Going from complaining in the first week about how dirty the children are getting and the noise on the ward, to by the last week, helping us to sew hospital sheets together so we could make a giant Chinese dragon decorated with paint and sequins to snake around the ward in honor of China Day, a request by one of the, one of the children. And you know where the mind goes, the body follows. Their physical and mental healing accelerated. The overzealous art students had accomplished in six weeks what the medical staff had not been able to do in years. We gave the children a sense of power, pride, and purpose, a sense of fulfillment. The hospital administration, their suspicions now melted, adopted the program and hired us to teach the junior nursing staff to ensure the continuity of the program. Now currently, many hospitals worldwide have artist-in-residence programs. Curators who manage hospital art collections and organize artists to create work with patients. Creativity by nature functions to empower and to heal people. The success of our program was in our recognition that the process of making something was in itself therapeutic. Our approach was not diagnostic. It was simply to have fun to be so engaged that you cannot but feel connected. Rumi, the Sufi poet, said, and I quote, humankind is being led along an evolving course through this migration of intelligences. And though we seem to be sleeping, there is an inner wakefulness that directs the dream, and that will eventually startle us back to the truth of who we are. So today, let us affirm, I am the playfulness of creation. I am the playfulness of creation. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Say it to your neighbor. You are the playfulness of creation. <laughs> Now say, right here and right now, I allow the spirit of creativity to have its way with me. I allow creativity to have its way with me. I allow this creative spirit to create magic through me today. I allow this creative spirit to create magic through me today. I love my life. Namaste.